What's good, YouTube family? Thank you for tuning back into another video. Make sure that y'all like, comment, and subscribe. This puts me more in YouTube's algorithm so that I can reach more people while using the gifts and abilities God has given me to glorify Him and His name, spread the gospel, and to make Him and His name known. Now, to get into this tutorial, just like any other cut, before I even pick up my clippers, I want to make sure that I prep the hair. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to comb the hair in the direction that it's supposed to be, in the direction that it grows. I'm going to lay it flat. Then, I believe I have a number two guard on, my wall seniors. I'm just going up to the Prada Ridge. As I get up to the Prada Ridge, I'm going to either flick out or use my comb so that I don't cut up into the hair. I want to make sure that I leave that bulky so that I don't take the fade too high and I don't take too much off of the crown area. And I just want to, I want to either use clipper over comb to remove that bulk at the top later on in the cut or scissor over comb or shear work. With that being said, I'm just going to continue doing the same thing around the whole entire head, making sure that I get the hair all the same length. And then I don't think I have it in the video, but I believe that I end up closing the number two guard and making all this hair that we just cut a number two guard close. Instead of it being open, I made it a two guard close. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set my ball lines in. I'm gonna put it right around the top of his ear. And I'm not gonna push this guideline between his beard too far down because I wanna keep it to create that shape to make it look like his beard is bigger than it is. And as y'all can see, I'm putting this up a little high in the back, but that's because his hair grows crazy. So to save yourself a headache as a barber, if somebody has hair like that, as long as the client doesn't care, you can do that. And I recommend that you do. And it's also gonna save you a lot of time. get into the fading process I had a blade open on some wall seniors and I'm gonna flick out to establish this guideline and after I get the guideline established by flicking out I'm gonna lay the blade flat and go to the top of the guideline then I'm gonna close my lever halfway go halfway up the guideline then I'm gonna close my lever a little more tap that bottom line soften it up then I'm gonna close the lever all the way and hit that bottom line and take that line out completely and I believe that from the blade open to close before you use a guard is the most important part of the fade because it's gonna determine how clean of a transition that you can get in your fade. It's like the foundation of the fade. The ball line is the foundation of the haircut because it's gonna determine how even of a haircut that you can give. It at least plays a big factor in it. And then from your blade open to close is the foundation of your fade. It's gonna determine or play a big factor in determining how clean of a fade that you can get. Now I have the number one guard on. It's the same exact steps. I'm gonna start by flicking out, creating my guideline. I'm gonna lay my blade flat, go to the top of the guideline, close the lever halfway, go halfway up the guideline, then close the lever all the way. And when I close the lever all the way, I'm not looking to take the line out completely. I'm just looking to soften it up so I can come with the zero guard and take it out. So with the zero guard, I look at it as an eraser guard. I never put lines in with it. I only take lines out with it, so I call it the eraser guard. So I just do detail work with the zero guard. By detail work, I mean lever play, open and closing my lever when need be, and then I'm gonna use corner work. So using the corner of my blade or the last couple teeth of my blade to pinpoint dark spots and to bring them to the light. This is a number two guard, y'all. I'm not really gonna explain this part because like I said, I ended up cutting a number two guard all the way around this head where we cut. Since we cut with the number two guard, we're just gonna take a number one and a half guard and we're just gonna go right up where we left off with that number two guard and then we're gonna slowly close our lever. So I do the same thing. I still do open halfway and close with the number one and a half guard just, just in case. Cause you can see some of his hair, some spots are more gradient than the others. Some are more dense than the others. So you just wanna make sure that you be careful. <laughs> Then I'm just gonna go back in doing detail work with the number one guard, pinpoint dark spots, bring them to the light, making the fade as smooth as possible. This is just some more detail work with the blade open to close. Like I said, I believe that this is the most important part of the fade, so I'm gonna really pay attention to the spot and uh, make this fade look flawless, make it more gradient. And like I said, pinpointed dark spots, bring them to the light, making the fade as smooth as possible. For my message for today, I'm going to read straight from the book of Proverbs. This is Proverbs chapter 1. 
the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give subtly to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. A man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the teaching of your mother, for they will be a garland of grace on your head and chains about your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for blood. Let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those who go down into the pit. We will find all kinds of precious possessions. We will fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. They lie in wait for their own blood. They lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy of gain, which takes away the life of its owners. Wisdom cries out in the street. She utters her voice in the markets. She cries at the corner of the streets and the openings of the gates. She speaks her words in the city saying, how long you simple ones will you love simplicity? For the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my reproof. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called you and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Because you neglected all my counsel and will have none of my reproof, I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes and your destruction comes as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then you will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me early, but they will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they will eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple will slay them and the prosperity of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure from fear of evil. I know that's a lot of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to retain. That chapter's 33 verses, and it's got a lot of gems in it. But make sure that y'all are getting in the Word of God, getting more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God and His Word, and saying, doing, and being more and better for God each and every day. Y'all, I miss my Aunt Lois, and I also found this card in my Bible that me, her, and Brinley made one day. It was making those little scratch cards. I drew a lion. I scratched off a lion in it, and I wrote this verse. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Proverbs 28.1 To get into the top, man, I'm not the greatest barber at shear work. I'm not going to sit here and act like I am. But I do know how to get it even and how to make the cut look good. So this is just what I do. I'm going to wet the hair, part it, and comb everything in the direction how the client wants it to look at the end result. And I'm just taking a little bit off. He ain't wet too much off. So I'm just right here. This is where that bow is going to be removed right here. I'm just going to take this, go all the way around his head, doing the same technique that you see me doing right here. Now I'm going to move up a little bit, and I'm just taking a little bit off, keeping it at an angle because I don't want to cut too, I don't want to cut too much from this area. So y'all can see how I'm kind of angling the hair up because I, I want it to be shorter on the sides, longer on the top. So y'all can see how I'm angling it up to make it longer on the top. And right here, I'm still keeping a little bit of an angle because we're still kind of on the side of his head. And I'm just making sure that I go in sections and I cut about the same amount off on every part. If anything, you might want to leave a little bit longer uh, in the back, around the crown, and in the front, around where people usually see that. Y'all can see I'm just going to keep doing the same step. I'm going to brush the hair to the other side, but when I brush it to the other side, because the client brushes his hair the way we started, when I brush it this way, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm not going to cut near as much off because I want this hair to be longer so that it lays over more. And I'm going to see y'all when we get into the lineup. I'm going to let y'all enjoy this, and I'm going to see y'all when we get into the lineup. I'll catch y'all there.
get into the lineup before I pick up my clippers. I wanna make sure that I clean the head. An artist don't paint on a dirty canvas. As a barber, you are an artist. Make sure that you're not cutting on the dirty canvas. So if you watched my video before, you know I like to tap in my slant. Y'all can see that I'm using my left hand for this. I just feel like it's a lot easier instead of turning my hand trying to hurt my wrist. I use my left hand to tap the slant in. Switch to my right hand when I get to around the top of the ear. I'm gonna convert to the corner of my blade or the last couple of teeth of my blade to finish making this arch shape around the ear. Make sure that when y'all doing ear lineups that you're really paying attention, you don't push them back. Y'all can see I'm barely cutting any hair off of this area and it's popping. You do not have to push lineups back to make the hair pop and make sure that you solidify your lineups. What I mean by solidifying a lineup is make sure that you put the first line in, you comb any hairs down that's gonna hang over and then you cut them overhanging hairs in the same line that you've already created so that there are not any overhanging hairs. This is why I say keep the lineup natural as possible. That's because that's gonna help you give the best lineup possible. By keeping it as natural as possible, it's gonna last a lot longer because there's not gonna be a lot of regrowth. And then it's gonna also last a lot longer, probably like two weeks because instead of uh, just leaving the hairs there, you were more detailed in your lineup and you combed any overhanging hairs and then cut the overhanging hairs. So you just did two things that's going to help your client, that's going to make you a more detailed barber, and it's going to benefit both of y'all. As y'all can see, I'm tapping the back of his beard line in. Same thing, with every lineup, you want to keep it natural as possible. After this, the C cup in this one is going to be in fast motion. Then we're going to do the ear lineup in fast motion on the other side, and then I'm explaining to the C cup on the other side. So I'm going to tap back in with y'all when we get to that point. I'm gonna tap in my vertical bar. Y'all can see that I'm making it nice and straight, not pushing it back. Then I'm gonna go to the bottom of the vertical bar, give me a little line to uh, a little visualization line. Then I'm gonna go to the bottom of the C cup and I'm gonna work my way from the bottom to the top. I'm gonna meet them in the middle because I already put that line in to where I want it to end. So then I'm just gonna visualize it the whole time. And y'all can see as soon as this clipper moves, boom, crispy. No pushback, nothing like that. Go ahead, do the same thing. Tap in the back of his beard on this side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create this nice, clean line up under his neck. He didn't really care where I put it. So, I want to give the beard a more full look, I kept it full. But he also didn't have a lot like on the side, so. You know what I'm saying? I put it in a good spot. I feel like this fits his face too. Now to cut his bangs, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like I cut him a little too. I feel like I cut his hair a little too much in the size like where his corners are, where like people receive that. So I had to take the bangs up a little, kind of even with that. But also he brushes his hair to the side. So it's gonna cover up anyway, but it's like, if I could change something about this cut, that's what all the changes about it. Go ahead, throw some product in this hair. You know what I'm saying? You want to take care of your clients. Throw some product in their hair. So I'm messing it around. Low key look decent like that. But he said he combed his hair to the side, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do for him. I'm also not going to sit here and say that I'm the best straight hairstylist in the world because I'm not. This is something that I really do, honestly. As y'all can see, y'all see the cuts that come on my channel, but I will cut anything just for y'all. A lot of people been asking for more straight haircuts. So when he came in, this is the first time I ever cut him, but he has straight hair. So I, I just wanted to make a video for y'all. Y'all can see how I do the little swoop. You know what I'm saying? Give him that Rico Suave. It's looking clean. 
But y'all, this is like a simple, basic haircut that y'all should be able to learn easy. Tap the mustache in. Keep it pretty thick. He didn't really care what his mustache was tapped in like. He just said he wanted it lined up, so he wanted specific. So I just decided to keep it thick. Just for, for the look, you know what I'm saying? This is look. Go ahead, do some razor work. Y'all see that back here. And this is the final product of the cut, y'all. Let me know what y'all think about this cut in the comment section. Let me know if you want to see more straight haircuts. Um, I really don't have a lot of clients that have straight hair, but you know what I'm saying? I can also make something happen. I think this cut turned out fire. The tapered butter, line up crispy, all natural cut. The Rico Suave on the top. You know what I'm saying? Line this beard up nicely. If you came to my channel just because you like watching barber videos, I hope you were satisfied. If you came to learn something, I hope you take something from my game, apply it to yours, and advance in your career, and your craft, and your life. And if you came for the message, I hope it touched your heart, your soul, your mind, and your body. Thank you for tuning back into the Late Show. I hope to see you back on the next video. And may God bless.